Hi everyone, many of you requested a video on a full stack app with Langraph. Today I will show you a simple approach of how to do that. The video is actually less about the code, but more about the layers of software that we use to achieve this. I will keep the code walkthrough so quite minimalistic in this video. Before we dive into the implementation, I first gonna show you a simple demo. Okay, so in this demo application, we can create a new user. Let's call him Joe and give him also the password Joe. And now we can see in the UI that we've got three users now named Joe. He's not an admin and currently he does not have a contract, but we can create that contract with an LLM. So here, this is the code we will use later. This is in the agentic workflow. And now we pass in the name Joe, create a tool and use the invoke method. Create a premium contract for me. So what's actually happening now is that will make use of an API. And here you can see this little pop-up. Are you sure you want to create a premium contract for Joe? So this is the human in the loop. I am responsible for confirming this request or denying that request. I will now click on deny and we can see that the user doesn't have a contract. And here we can see this was run multiple times. And the final message is, it looks like the request for your premium contract has been denied by the admin Joe. Okay, now let's try that again. But this time, let's see if what happens when we click on confirm. Again, we see this pop up. Now we click on confirm and we can see that the contract category is now premium. Contract time is today. So th today this was created. And now let's have another look at the final response here. And now we can see your premium contract has been successfully created. So this is how we can implement a human in the loop workflow. Okay, so now you have an idea of what's going on in this application. So whenever you want to interact with any kind of backend software, I recommend building any kind of API to implement your business logic. My favorite framework for this is fast API. We can use this API for a front end to display our users and even trigger this pop-up where we wait for a click in the backend and also use the backend as layer for tool calling with our agent. It's better security wise to use the API as layer around the database and not let the agent directly talk or connect to the database. It's also easier to validate and standardize the data flow. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and here on the left you can see multiple files. You can see an app.py, this is the complete backend. Then we've got the static folder with an index.html. This is the front end, which is responsible for displaying all of our users and also making requests to our API. So since this is the most important part and yeah, most of my projects are Python based, we're gonna walk through that first. So we import different classes here from SQL Alchemy. We use SQL Alchemy to create a database to persist our data. So here we create a SQLite database, which will be just a file on our local file system. And Around that, we build our API. So here we've got a lifespan for fast API. This means when we start the app that we create new users, we create two admin users, admin one and admin two. And these two are allowed to actually create contracts for the new registered user. So the user is not self able to create a contract, but only talk to our chatbot and ask for permission to create a contract. Then the agent will take over and push a message to the front end and there is the human in the work workflow. So the human is able to accept or decline that and send back a response um, again to the API. Okay, so let's crawl a little bit down. Here we create our fast API application where we add this lifespan. We also add security classes here, which makes it very easy to use an OAuth2 scheme to uh, create tokens from a login endpoint. And here we mount our static folder, which has got this index.html to our application and we serve that here in this root route. So we can directly display it here. So we not only create an API, but we also serve HTML. Next part in this application is our data layer where we create our tables for SQLite. So we've got a users table, which has got an ID, name, our password, the information if it's an admin or not, the admin decision. This is um, used to actually store the information if a request was denied or accepted, and then a relationship to the user's contract table. So each user has got a single contract um, with premium, basic, 
or normal and these tables are linked by this table here. After that, we create a user model, so a schema for the output and the input of our endpoints, some other models, and these models are all used in our endpoints. Okay, then we create some helper functions, for example, get user by ID. These are also used in the endpoint and used via dependency injection, a mechanism used by fast API. Some more, and we also use a WebSocket to actually um, set up a connection to the front end so we can exchange data in real time. This is important for the pop-up that is used to accept or deny a request by an agent. And after that, we create all of our routes. Routes for registering a user, create a token to authenticate for, let's say, the endpoint to create a contract. Only authenticated users are able to create a contract. So we get all contracts, we can update a contract, we can delete a contract, and here we use this for asking an admin for permission. So this will trigger the pop-up, and then we've got this endpoint, which is responsible for confirming the response from that pop-up. So deny or accept, and then we write that into the user uh, field admin decision, and based on that, we handle that differently. We then also have got a user's endpoint where we get all of our users. We get a specific user, and here we can check the confirmation for a specific username. And yeah, based on what's the state of the contract, so if the user doesn't have a contract, we want to create one and wait for a response. And if the user already got a contract, then we will handle a delete request. So this is the only two options. When you don't have a contract, then you can only create one. And when you have a contract, you cannot create another contract again. So if you have a contract, the current contract will be deleted in three months. Okay, these are our endpoints, and I'm gonna show you that now in the browser. So here you can see it, this is the front end. Currently we've got two users, only admin one and admin two. These are created when we start the application. And now if we go to docs, we can see all of our endpoints. So here we can see there is where the HTML is served, and here we can register, create a token, create a contract, and here you can see on the right, these all require authentication. Okay, so first, let's go back to the root page. Let's say the username is max and the password is also max. Then we can see that we created a new user. This time, max is no admin, and currently he doesn't have a contract. So now we want to use the LLM to ask for permission to create one. Okay, I'm back in VS Code, and now please go to the Multivoice Agents iPython Notebook. We first go load the OpenAI API key and then create a prompt for our agent. So the prompt is you are Andrea, knowledgeable and friendly assistant in a telecommunication company. Your expertise lies in uh, creating and updating plans and so on and so on. Always be friendly, speak to the user with his or her username. Remember your goal is to make sure the field the user make feel supported and informed. So this is our system prompt, which we're gonna use and then we're gonna create our functions. So our functions will not directly connect to the database, but rather use the API. So first we're gonna use a login function, and this login function will make a request to the token endpoint. So currently everything is running on localhost. This is why we use localhost and append this token string here. We pass in the username, which is in this case admin1, and also pass the password. So we get back a token, and we will use that token to create further requests to other endpoints which are secured. We're gonna use the login function in another function in the ask admin function. This will make a request to the admin to click either accept or deny. And we save the token which we get from this endpoint, from the token endpoint, save it in this headers variable, and we will send this headers variable in the request we make to the ask admin endpoint, and we send the data, so we send the action, so we want to make a request, and we also send the username, so we can actually query the database with the correct username. We send the headers in the headers part, because you send your bearer token in the request header. So if the request to this endpoint did not work, we also want to inform the user that the request to the admin approval actually failed, otherwise we want to print that the admin approval was requested. Okay, so now we want to wait for admin approval, and this will be done in a while loop. So we make multiple requests 
to check for the confirmation for this specific username. So we make a request to this endpoint, check the response and check if in the message result is admin denied the request, contract created or contract will be canceled in three months. This will be the allowed messages that we get. So we check for that. And if the message is in that list, then we will turn the result. Otherwise, we will sleep for two seconds and try to make that request again until we get approval. Okay, these were the helper functions. Now we want to create our tools. So the tools are responsible for actually creating our contract. We provide this doc string for the LLM. So the LLM can identify what this tool is responsible for. So the contract, a create contract tool is responsible for creating a new contract. It needs a username for the user and also a category, basic, normal, or premium. And then also the return value. So first we're gonna log in, save the token in this headers variable and create another request here to contracts, user, and then for one specific username. So we want to check if the user already has a contract, if we actually found that user, because we cannot create a contract for user that does not exist. Then the next step is not to create a contract, but first ask the admin in the front end for approval. So we use this function, ask admin, pass in the category, which is create, and we pass in the username we want to make a contract for and the category for this contract, so normal, premium, or basic. And after making the request, we want to wait for admin approval. So we use this function, which runs in a loop. And if the admin either clicked on accept or deny, then we will get this approval result variable. And we will check the message here. And if the message is admin denied the request, then we will return that message. Otherwise, if it was not denied, but accepted, then we will return this message. So where it's actually the creation of the contract, you may ask. This is handled in the front end. So the front end directly will make a request to the contract's endpoint and create that contract with the information that you provided in the parameters for this tool. So this username gets this contract. Okay, so I think this is actually quite a complex tool. And now we create a tools list since LLMs need a list of tools to work with. And now we could just use it like this. So we can create a system message uh, where we pass in the username. We create a human message. Please create a premium contact for me. And then we don't have any chat history. We concatenate this to a messages list, bind the tools to the model, and then just use the invoke method. This is how we could do it, but we can also do it here with Langref. So for Langref, we import a tool node. The tool node makes it quite easy to work with tools in an agentic workflow with Langref. We also import the state graph for our state and the messages state, which is a specific state for working with uh, system messages, human messages, and AI messages. So this makes it uh, quite easy to append and extract the correct state for tool calling. So we create our functions. The first one is should continue. And this is a very basic example, actually. So we extract the messages and check if the last message has got a tool calls attribute. And if that's the case, then we will return the string tools. Otherwise, we will return the uh, end node. So this will be used by this tool node. So we this will be used to determine if we should use a tool or not. And we create a second function, which is call model where we extract the messages again. And this time we append our system message, which we defined here with our username and append all messages to that. So first the system message and then all of the other messages. And then we pass all messages to the invoke method of our model with tools. We then can create our workflow. So we use state graph, which gets passed the messages state to the constructor. This will be our workflow. And now we can add nodes and edges. So as node, we add our agent node where we pass in the call model function. We add another node for the tools and we just pass in our tool node here and an entry point. So via default, we use the agent and not the tools, of course. And then we set a conditional edge. So for the agent node, we want to determine if we should continue based on the output of this function. So if it's tools, then we will route to the tools node. Otherwise we will return 
or route to the end node. So we will stop the iteration. And from the tools node, we want to route back to the agent node because we want to make a final request to the LLM. We use a memory saver as check pointer for our application. Okay, so let's create that application. And now we can use the invoke method. So as message, we pass in just a single message here in a list and pass in the config. This will be used um, in combination with our check pointer, but actually doesn't really matter. We don't need it in this case, but this is important, this list of messages. And now we want that um, we want to create a premium contract for me. And me is, since we provide the system message, the username max, which we just created. So let's first run all of that code. And now let's try it out. And now we can see received admin approval response. No contract, approval waiting. And here we can see the pop-up. So we can now deny it or confirm it. Let's deny it. And here we can see that the admin denied the request. This is the message that we get from the LLM as final response. It seems that the request for premium contract has been denied by the admin, Max. Okay, so this works. And of course, it's only a proof of concept, nothing production ready. But please let me think what you think about this implementation. Thank you very much for watching. See you. Bye bye.